Hey everybody, this is round one of my playthrough of Perils of the Lost Coast. The adventure set that was included in the Pathfinder adventure card game Rise of the Rune Lords box. This is uh, scenario two in that greater adventure of Perils of the Lost Coast. And it's called The Poison Pill. Let's read a little bit about it. Local alchemist, Oliver Pillbug Potaker sells all manner of herbs, but supposedly also drugs, venoms, and worse. His current interest, experimenting with lethally poisonous rat traps, is getting dangerously out of hand. Disarm his deadly traps before someone gets hurt. There's a global rule for this scenario, which is add two to your checks to acquire allies. There are quite a few allies available as well, so that's going to be very useful, potentially. Each character draws a random weapon from the box. If I win this scenario, that could be useful too, actually. I have I have a spellcaster in this group, but she's also, I mean, she's a cleric, so she does know her weapons. She's not like Sioni or Ezrin, who don't, don't really do much with weaponry. So that's refreshing. I got Harsk, of course. He's good with weapons. So this could be a good little, um, little side trek. Although it's not a sidetrack, there's a villain, and there are four locations. The general store of Sandpoint, the town square of Sandpoint, the city gates to Sandpoint, and then the village house. So if you've watched the Rise of the Rune Lords playthrough, you're familiar with all of these locations. But of course, it's all randomized. The, the, the card list is the same, but we don't know what actual cards have gotten into the deck. So I still think there's a lot of surprises to be had. I also realized after the Rise of the Rune Lord playthrough that I had never gotten through the ally deck to some of the named characters, uh, which I think I was supposed to somehow use first, maybe, for my playthrough of Rise of the Rune Lords. So there's a bunch of named allies from the Rise of the Rune Lords that are going to be appearing in here, which is fine because they're, they're inhabitants... They're, they're residents of Sandpoint, so it makes sense that they'd be here. But it's just kind of interesting that I didn't realize I was supposed to use those cards specifically for the Rise of the Rune Lords playthrough. Okay, so I guess we'll just get started then. Oh, and I've uh, one one other note. I did not, I have not been very, I say, um, religious about thinning out their the each character's deck. I don't feel like I acquired that many cards last time. And I just didn't bother filtering out, you know, d drawing back down to their starting hands. So, uh, they're, they're a little bit boosted, really. But my logic was that Kira can rescue cards from the discard pile anyway. I have a fairly low tolerance for low health myself, so I don't really feel like I'm giving myself that much of an advantage, to be perfectly honest. And the previous scenario was surprisingly difficult in terms of combat. I was so used to rolling Sioni's really, really powerful Arcane Bolt or Valeros's really, really powerful Bastard Sword. I was not prepared for what I encountered last time. So I feel like the balance is going to be okay for my for my tastes. We'll see. If it's too easy, I'll, I'll make it harder again next time for the final scenario in this uh, adventure. But we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to start out by turning over a timer card, as usual. And then I have to choose where to go. I think I'm going to choose the city gate. And I'm doing this partly out of guilt for boosting their decks a little bit. If you fail a combat check, shuffle a random monster from the box into the location deck. So failing a fight dupli you know, multiplies monsters. And that's honestly not a mechanic that I have gotten to experience yet, because it never, I don't think it ever happened at, you know, in the, in the first playthrough. So I think I might just do that just to see what happens. It sounds like a fun mechanic to, to have to contend with. So this is the city gate. Same, same description applies. Alert and capable guards hold their posts, questioning visitors and checking cargo at this forti fortified entry into the community. Between the cards stand strong gates and sturdy portcullis. 
the wood and steel of these solid barriers showing scratches and scores acquired while defending against unwelcome strangers, would-be invaders, and worse. All right, so... Oh yeah, and there's a global rule. Oh yeah, I just read that. That's the monster thing. Uh, and to close this, you have to defeat a bandit henchman, which isn't impossible. It's so Harsk. We've got a timer deck, uh, card flips, so Harsk moves to the city gates. And right away, an ally could be acquired. Now, none of these skills are particularly great for Harsk. He does have... Well, Charisma is his lowest, but he does have a d4 in Charisma, and he's got a plus two for that global rule, add two to your checks to acquire an ally. So I will put a little bonus of two on the card, and I will roll a d4. He rolls a one. That does not succeed, even with a bonus of two, so the Acolyte is not acquired. Oh, and he has no hand. I've not drawn his cards yet. Five. So this is his initial hand. So he must have one of his favored cards in it, which is a weapon. So if he does not have a weapon, then I can redraw. He has a weapon, light crossbow. That's actually probably his best weapon because uh, it uses his ranged uh, skill. And so he does have a standard bearer who can help him with strength and constitution checks. And as usual, I'm going to just squander this ally, discard the ally so that Harsk can explore again. I'm doing that because I do want them to acquire cards. This is a this is kind of that second act in the in the adventure and f just like the Rune Lord second act, I I feel like it's partly there to boost. So I'm going to try to take advantage of that. Quarterstaff. This uh, could be good for him. Uh, it's a d6, actually. I mean, his strength in melee isn't his best skill, but it is a skill that he has. He has a d6 in that, so let's see what he does rolling. Five to acquire a quarterstaff. He only needed a three, so he's got a quarterstaff. And that's the kind of thing I wanted, really. So, yeah, we, we discarded an ally, but we've gained a weapon that he could use in combat. And the weapons, as I've kind of been discovering more and more uh, with combat, the weapons, it is not bad to have a couple of weapons that maybe isn't your best skill, because you can discard it for yet another die. And so, it, you know, it's nice to have your, your, your sort of hero weapon that you just reveal and never discard, never cycle through. But having a spare weapon or two where you can just use it and, and discard it actually can be a quite a powerful advantage. Okay, speaking of powerful advantages, Harsk is a ranged build. He, he does better when he is not in the same location as his fellow player character. So I'm going to split the party, which if you play RPGs, you'll know sounds scary. But uh, yeah, Harsk is not built to help people when he's in the same location. He's built to help from afar. So I think Kira is going to go to the general store. It's a relatively friendly location. It's two monsters, but no barriers. Customers can find a little bit of everything in the town's best-stocked general store. Mundane goods, weapons and armor, even the occasional potion. Aside from wares, both common and extraordinary, the shop also serves as a gathering place for all sorts of town gossip, and the store's owner is among the best-informed and connected folks around. Okay. Uh, she doesn't have a hand. I haven't ticked over a timer card. Now I have. So she still doesn't have a hand, though, so I need to draw up to five for Kira. She needs a blessing. That's her favored weapon uh, card type. So she's got that. This is an item she acquired previously, a spyglass for perception. Lots of potion. I mean, lots of blessings. Potion is good. That rescues stuff out of your discard pile. 
She has no weapon. So that's a little bit scary. I do not like that. And she's got an ally as well. Right, right from the start. So she can use her Charisma Diplomacy or uh, her uh, Dex and Stealth. I don't know off the top of my head what is better for her. So Charisma is a D6. Oh, Dexterity is a D4. Okay, understood. So she's going to be rolling a D6 for her Charisma. And she has no Diplomacy. But remember, she's got that plus two because of the global rule in place for this adventure. She rolls a one. So this was Ven Vinder, and you could banish him to add a, a, a random item from the box to your hand. That would have been really nice, um, but he, he is not that helpful today. I think this is actually the gen general store owner, I think. I could be wrong, but anyway, he's not helping. Oh yeah, so what do we do? Uh, I guess we'll just spend a blessing, honestly, to explore again. A glaive. Oh, that's nice. Uh, this this has. I wonder if this has anything to express its extended reach. Well, it's a one. It's a one d ten. This would be really really nice to acquire. I don't know that she's going to be able to do it with a nine strength melee. That does not sound like something she can. Wait, I forgot she had a plus two. Well, still, yeah, a nine is out of reach. Unless she were to spend a blessing on it. I kind of feel like this could be worth it. So I'm spending a blessing to add a die to her check for this. Her strength die is a d6. So I'm adding another d6. She does not get her bonus because that's not an ally. Um, oh no, she gets a bonus because she does get to roll melee. So this is not the ally bonus. This is her melee bonus. So the first six, six, uh, first, first d6 comes up as a six. That's what she needed because now that's an eight total. She can't roll lower than a one. So she gets the glaive. That is great. Because this is, I mean, look at that. That's a D10. All she has to do is reveal this card, and she's rolling a D10 in combat, plus her strength, plus her melee bonus. This is this could literally be a game changer for combat. That is four cards in her hand. She needs to draw up one at the end of her turn, and it is now the end of her turn. So she's she's got some holy water now against the undead. Um, she actually has a a feat or a skill or something that, that, well, I guess it would be a feat, sort of, uh, that can deal with undead pretty effectively, so I'm not too worried about that, but that's great. That was a great turn, or it was a great, great acquisition anyway. I mean, it cost us two blessings. Wait a minute, how did I just, how, did I cheat again? I feel like I might have, did I have her... Did I have her, um, her hand? I think I had her hand as a six instead of a five. Cause other, cause so she just drew the glaive and she's just, she's expended two blessings. Yep. Somehow I cheated. Okay. Well, I guess what I'll do then is I'll recharge the shield as penance. And I, I do that because I, that's the least that's an important card. I don't actually want to do that, so I'm, I'm doing that. So now she is... Oh, now she's down to four, which is what she should have been down, because she acquired one, discarded two, so she would have been down to four. So now she's drawing back up uh, at the end of her turn. I think I'm gonna... Oh wait, this guard adds a d6 to perception. Well, she's got a d6 to perception with this really cool spyglass. This guy is not as important as he could have been otherwise. So actually, she can't do anything. That was the end of her turn. She can't, she doesn't get to play cards. Okay, well, he's not long for this world. He's going to get discarded next time because I just want to explore. That's not the right one. I just want to explore locations. Okay, it's Harsk's turn now. 
and he's going to explore his location, and this is Sheriff Hemlock. Diplomacy, the charisma of diplomacy to acquire, that's not possible for Harsk, really. Uh, I don't recall him having anything magical to help with this, no. Even with a plus two, uh, Harsk only rolls a d4, there's no way. So that's the, obviously another named character. Okay, so that's Harsk's turn. And there's another timer card. And so now she draws a card. This would be really great for Harsk. Not so great for Kira. Because her dex is a d4. So there's no way she can make a 9. So this is completely and utterly wasted on Kira, unfortunately. Um, I'm forgetting a feature of Harsk, as I often do, and that is that at the end of his turn, he's allowed to scry or, or you know, look at the top of the deck. So he's scrying at um, his location, and he uncovers the henchman card, which in this case is a poison trap. So this is one of the traps that uh, Pillbug, what's his name, is putting down for trap for for rats. And uh, unfortunately, I, I guess it's probably been probably trapping other things other than rats is the problem. The henchman card, though, means that as long as we defeat this, uh, we can then attempt to close this location. It's going to take a dexterity or disable roll to defeat this. Harsk isn't too bad at dexterity, but of course, he won't be getting his... Uh, ranged bonus, so it'll really only be a d8 when he confronts that. That's something to keep in mind. Okay, back to what we were doing. Longbow. This would be great for Harsk, and unfortunately there's no way that Kira can acquire that. She's going to discard the guard to explore again, because he all he does is benefit her with perception, and she's got perception pretty much taken care of with her, um, oop, I just put that in the wrong discard pile, with her um, s uh, spectacle, what, what's it called? Spyglass, spyglass. Okay, so she's exploring again. Did I turn over Harsk, Kira, Harsk, Kira? Yes, I guess I did. Okay, cool. Good for me. Caltrips. This is a dexterity to acquire and I feel like there's a chance that she could get that to two so she did not get that oh, wait no yeah because it's not an ally so she, there's no bonus um you can banish this card to evade a monster oh that's cool whose highest difficulty to defeat is 14 or lower Banish this card to defeat a monster whose higher high, highest difficulty is uh, nine or lower. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, but no, unfortunately, we we don't get that. That's a, a really cool card, though. I like that. It's very flavorful because you're throwing down caltrops to either defeat or evade, which is really cool. Um, okay, so that's her turn. I think four cards in her hand. She draws back up to five and we've got a mending spell that could be sort of good she still doesn't have an attack well she no she has her weapon that's fine yeah okay cool she doesn't have armor that's that's the one thing she doesn't have all right so i guess harsk is gonna go up against this poison trap i don't see a way around it he could travel up here no it's better to it's better to face the henchman here now i mean harsk seeing that there is a henchman here we know that the villain is not at the city gates because otherwise there wouldn't be a henchman in the deck however it's still really important to close a location so that the villain can't escape to that location so it's still worth doing I didn't flip over a card yet, so there we go. That's Harsk's card, the timer card, and he explores. It's the poison trap. He needs to make a dexterity save. 
for a uh, f uh, of a five, and his dexterity is just a d8. No bonuses, nothing. And he doesn't have any blessings, right? No. Potion of vision is perception. Amulet is armor. So we, we might be able to maybe reduce damage. If undefeated, discard the top card of your deck. Then each character at this location... Cool, that doesn't matter. Okay. So, well, no, it does matter. Must succeed at a constitution or fortitude or be dealt more damage. He'll succeed his fortitude. That I'm not concerned about. For that, he's got a d12. But what I'm really wanting to do is not get ensnared by this thing. And he rolls a 7. That's awfully nice of him. So he defeats this thing. He can now close his location by summoning and defeating a bandit henchman. I mean, we just came from fighting bandit henchmen. That's what we've been up against since the previous scenario. There were a bunch of bandit henchmen there, as I recall. Um, so I'm not too concerned about them myself. It's an 8 to defeat Harsh Kaz. A longbow, that'll get him another d8. Or he could expend that quarterstaff that he got. That might be fun. Strength and melee for Harsk. Getting a d6 and then discard the card to add another d6. Is that a waste? I feel like that's a waste. That's a waste, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, at the same time, though, you know, use it or lose it. Does he have armor? Doesn't have armor right now. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a d6 and a d6. Yeah, why not? And then whatever his strength is, which is a d6. So that's 3d6 to get an 8. Oh, I think that's a 1. Yeah, that's a 1. That's a 6. So he can't roll less than a 1 on this d6. So he, he has defeated the monster. He rolls a 6. So he, he's beat this thing by like 7 or something. Or, um, uh, no, 5. I don't know. 6. Uh, before the encounter, recharge a card of your choice. Oops. I guess I should have done that. Um, okay, so he has to recharge something. Well, obviously the potion of of the coffee, the, the cup of coffee that makes you a little bit more perceptive. Um, okay, so the bandit's gone. Which means that this location now is closed. Of course, we love closing locations because that means that for our timer deck, we, we, we don't have to spend one, two, three, four, five, six cards from our timer deck now because we know that the villain isn't in here. Location's closed. We don't have to worry about it. So that is a closed location, which is huge. Because that buys us more time, and it means that we have one place that the villain can't escape to should we encounter the villain uh, in this location or the other locations. So yeah, next time we'll pick up with Kira. And we'll continue to explore the um, general store. And maybe we'll split the party and send Harsk somewhere. Who knows? I'll think about it, and, uh, and we'll get to that next time. Thanks for watching.